And here we are, playing with some water and glowy ink, which we're going to use to draw with in a moment. Each drop of glowy ink upon hitting the water and diffusing makes the jar a little bit brighter, even if it's barely noticeable. Maybe, maybe looking at things and getting little drops of inspiration works the same way. I don't know, maybe, maybe my brain jar will get so bright one day that it'll just explode or, or none of the drops will make a difference anymore. Who knows? I don't know how it works. I haven't tried adding that many drops yet. The real question is how to get those drops of inspiration from the world, from reality. Some people wonder about how to get milk from almonds. That's another good question. It turns out they soak them and blend them and strain them and, and probably add some sort of sweetener. And they probably add milk. But anyways, reality is out there and we somehow have to soak it and blend it and strain it and sweeten it up with some milk somehow and squeeze out every last drop of inspiration and drippily drop it into our brain jars and brighten it all up so that we can put it out onto the paper, whatever your paper happens to be. Maybe your paper is some poetry you're writing, or just maybe just the way you interact with each other. I don't know. I'm kind of waxing a little eloquent here. I didn't want to do that. I just want to draw a picture. Okay. Okay, let's just draw a picture. Let's do it. I had the lights off. I had all the lights off. I just have a glass pen here. Okay, I have a glass pen. Um, what's this ink called? It is called Noodler. Uh, does it even say the blue? It does say the blue ghost. Noodler's ink. So this pen, this ink is actually intended for fountain pens, but it worked well with this glass pen I bought. Actually, I was not. I did not buy it. It was given to me. That was in a previous glass pen video, and it works well with glass pens. I'll put links to stuff in the description. Look, it's, it's fun to combine different art supplies. Stuff that necessarily wasn't meant for each other can work fantastically. Like that one time I used a banana in ink. Okay, maybe one of those things was not an art supply. You know, but, you know, who, whoever intended, whoever invented ink and bananas did not intend for them to be together. But ink just tastes so dang good. But look, this drawing was great. I had to be very careful not to get any of the glowy ink on my fingers, because I was touching the paper a lot with my left hand, and I knew very that very easily I could start smudging, and any smudging would be so painfully apparent. Usually I'm fine with some smudging, but this time I wanted to keep it as crisp and clean as I could. And, you know, so all the lines would seem, uh, the lines I did put down would seem as, you know, as sharp and bright and glowy as possible. And I think it turned out pretty well. This, this ink doesn't smear very well if you don't touch it when it's wet. And this, interestingly enough, when you have the, the black light shining on it, it's actually a completely different color when it's wet. It's like a little bit... It's like a brighter blue, and then it, as it dries, it turns down into like a different, less bright blue. That's just common sense. But, um, am I saying but um a lot? But, um, uh, and then I, and I, this is a paper blanks notebook I'm drawing in. I bought it at some corner store somewhere in Chicago, I think. But they're available on the internet somewhere. They're kind of expensive, but they're fun, mostly because they have really ornate covers uh, you know, that can be inspiring right now. That can inspire you to greatness. Just an ornate cover. Sometimes, on the other hand, though, I like a really plain cover. Because then I'm like, nobody knows. You know, like a really, just a plain black or plain white cover. Like nothing, like there's not, it's kind of like hidden waters. Isn't there a saying like something hidden, still waters, something? Anyways, you just like, you don't know what's on the inside until you open it up and it all jumps out at you, blowing your face off these incredible drawings and doodles and whatever you put in your sketchbooks, sketches, art. There's art inside, yes. And it, it, you couldn't tell. It's totally nondescript on the outside because, you know, like what if you know, someone was holding it up like, you know, you hold up a, a plain black notebook, nobody looks twice at it, and you just say, 
Wait till I show you what's in here. You hold up one of these paper blank notebooks with the super ornate cover. People will expect a lot. People will expect a lot out of a sketchbook like that. So you gotta be careful, you know, there's two ways to approach it. Anyways, this one uh, has an awesome cover, uh, you know, and uh, so, you know, do whatever you want. You can also buy a plain one and draw on the outside. So maybe that's the third, you know, door number three. Go for it, do whatever you want. Uh, but I had fun with this. There's a lot of different glowy inks out there, by the way. Some of them are meant for different purposes. I've used glowy ink that was intended as printing ink. I'm not sure what that meant, uh, but that's what it was advertised as. I'm not sure if you're supposed to put it in a printer, uh, but that seemed to work fine for me. I used it with brushes and I would uh, paint my fingernails and it would only show up in black light. It looked pretty awesome. And uh, I got it on my skin a lot. And then I found out on the bottle it said, on, it, it said never, ever get it on your skin or your eyes. And I had all these crazy warnings. But it's like, I'm like, probably that's just like worst scenario. There's probably like 0.01% of the population that's allergic to printer ink or something. I probably don't need to worry about it, right? What are, the, what are the chances? But anyways, there's never anything bad things that happened, you know, if you're wondering. Uh, everything was okay. Except I probably forgot to wash it off that night, and then I probably got it all over my pillow, and I didn't know it because it was invisible. With great superpowers come great messes. That's what I found out. Anyways, so get out there. Get those almonds of life. Make that inspirational almond milk. You know, however you have to go about it. Squeeze hard. Get get the blend tech blender, you know. Will it blend? Life, it'll blend. Oh, it will. You might have to set it on puree. Uh, but you can get it. Even the most simple, simple things that might seem the, the hardest, the toughest, uh, maybe they just need to soak for a while. That's the first step in making our almond milk. Just let it soak for a while. Overnight or up to two days. All right? No rush. Let it sit. Let it simmer, let it marinate. It's, it's gonna be okay. All right, uh, y'all take it easy. Uh, goodbye, goodbye. Uh, yeah, I feel.